what is going on guys welcome back to the channel in today's video we're going to be learning about websockets a way where you can get real-time data from an api and this is something that backs apps like Robinhood or any app that shows real-time data be it stock information or something else so before we get into it drop a like down below hit subscribe you guys know the spiel and let's dive into xcode so we're going to go ahead and open up xcode we're going to start by creating a new project here we're going to stick with the app template under ios and i'm going to go ahead and call this web socket example let me go ahead and fix that typo there. We're going to stick with Storyboard and Swift. Uh, the UI is a little irrelevant here, so this works with Swift UI as well. Go ahead and continue and save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop. Now, before we get into things, let's go ahead and pick a simulator here. We'll go with the 12 Pro Max. I'm going to jump into my view controller. Let me also expand my Xcode window here. And let's go ahead and just set a background color so we know our app is actually running. So we'll go ahead and maybe make this system blue, just like that. Hit Command R to build and run, and then we'll get into the weeds of the actual WebSocket implementation. Now, this is something I've been playing around with personally a lot lately, and it's really cool and it's really simple to set up. Um, so let's get into it. So the nature of a WebSocket is you need to connect to it and continuously listen for messages in the receive function, and you can also send messages. So I'm going to stub out four functions that we're going to need to implement. The first one is going to be ping. The next one is going to be close, which closes the WebSocket. The third one is going to be send. And of course, the last one is going to be receive. Now, before we can actually implement these, we need to actually create said WebSocket. So the way we go about doing this is we first need to create a, a session. We want to create our own URL session. So we're going to say URL session. And we want to create this with a configuration delegate and a delegate queue. So the configuration, pretty simple. We're not going to change anything. We're just going to use defaults. We need to supply a delegate. And this is how we're going to get events like uh, if the WebSocket connection was established, if it was closed, so on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and say self here. It's going to yell at me because we haven't conformed to the delegate yet. And the delegate queue, we're just going to instantiate and pass in an operation queue. You can also do this on the main thread or the main queue, but ideally you don't want to do this on the same queue that you're doing your UI work on. So we're just going to pass in a new queue just like that. Now, before this starts yelling at me, it looks like it's already yelling at me. Let's come up here and conform to the URL session. And I believe it's called a web socket delegate. And whoops, let's try that one more time. Web socket delegates. And the two delegate functions that we are going to bring in is I think it's called did connect or something along those lines. Let's see what's available. We're going to say web sockets. There is a web socket task here and we want the one for did close and did open. There's actually two and we want both of them there. So we're going to bring that in and we're going to bring in did close. That is not what I want. I think that's the right one. Let's double check. Yeah, WebSocket task did close. Now, before we put anything in here, let's go ahead and create the actual WebSocket. So right now we have a session. How do we actually uh, get a WebSocket out of this? So we're going to go ahead and say let's WebSocket uh, is going to be from this session. Go ahead and create a WebSocket task. And we want to pass in a URL here. Now, how do we actually go about creating this URL? Well, we actually need a special WebSocket URL, and I've got my browser opened up here. We're going to use this dummy test URL that we can get data from and send data to. I'll link this down below. And right up here, we're going to go ahead and create this URL, just like any other standard URL. We're going to pass this guy in as a string. One thing that's interesting and important to note here, WebSocket URLs don't use the HTTPS protocol. They use WSS, presumably for WebSocket stream. So that's uh, one differentiator here. You can visually very easily uh, just see. 
So we're gonna go ahead and pass that in. I'm gonna force unwrap because we know it's a valid URL uh, in your actual application. You probably wanna go ahead and unwrap it more safely. Now that we've got this WebSocket created, we're gonna say WebSocket.resume, just like any type of URL session task. Now, one other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a global instance that we can hang on to for this web WebSocket. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we're gonna need a reference to this momentarily when we implement the other functions down below. It's a WebSocket task. We're gonna make it optional since uh, by default, it's not really assigned to anything. We're gonna make this guy optional. And let's actually give our app a run. I'm gonna go ahead and print in here in the did open connection. This is gonna get called as soon as we have opened a connection. So we're gonna go ahead and say did connect to socket. And then in the close here, I'm also gonna go ahead and say did close connection with reason. And notice there's a reason argument in the actual signature, so we'll just print that out as well. So let's go ahead and give this a run, and the first thing that I screwed up is a typo, so it looks like the reason is data. So instead of, uh, I guess we could print it out, but I actually had a typo there. So we won't actually see something uh, valuable unless we encode this to a string, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. So we'll go ahead and give this a run, build succeeded, and we expect to see the connection successfully established down here. Uh, did connect to socket, so we're off to a good start. Now let's go ahead and implement the meat of the WebSocket, which is actually sending and receiving uh, messages. Uh, and in your actual application, I'm gonna stick with Robinhood as the example. If you were on a screen where you wanted to see real time, you know, price fluctuation, you would send and receive market data. So the first thing that you might be thinking, what the heck is this ping thing? So the nature of a WebSocket is you need to ping the WebSocket to establish a connection that the WebSocket is still alive. So ping gets called uh, every so often by the WebSocket to establish that, hey, the connection is still alive. And it's really easy to implement this. We're just gonna say WebSocket, if I can spell it correctly, WebSocket, and we're gonna say, I believe, send ping, just like that. It has a callback and it gives us a error, just like that. And we're gonna say, if let error equals error, we're just gonna print it out. So I'm gonna say, ping, error, just like that. And we're gonna stick the error in there. Now this is a trailing uh, closure, so we can get rid of this, I believe. Let's see if I can get away with this and get rid of that parenthesis right there. Makes our code a little cleaner. So that's ping for you. Now the next thing in here is closing the connection, otherwise known as canceling it. We're gonna call this by pressing a button on the UI that we'll add, and this, all we're gonna say is cancel. Now we can go ahead and cancel this uh, with a actual uh, reason or a status code here. So we can go ahead and pass in going away, an abnormal closure, whatever the reason is, and the reason is uh, you know a uh, data from a string that we can derive. So I believe what we can go ahead and do is we can create a string and say data using UTF-8 and we can go ahead and say demo ended. Now this is the reason you would send a reason is because the server might want to log on their side, you know, why was the connection closed? Was it an interruption uh, or did something go wrong or did the user just navigate away? So that's the other thing we want to do here. Send and receive, this is for the actual data. So for sending, we're gonna say WebSocket, I believe it is send, and we are going to send a message. So we want this one here. We're gonna send a string. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do in here is gonna say send new message. And I'm just going to put in a random integer since we're gonna print this out. So I wanna have some variability in our console. So it's gonna be a random number, one to, or rather zero to 1000. Now this completion handler here, similar to the send ping, will give us an error. Now if we had an error for any reason, we shall print it out after unwrapping it. So we're gonna say if let error is error, we're gonna say send error, and we're gonna stick that in there. And then finally, the last function that we need to implement is receive. Now you might be wondering, why do we need to implement this? Shouldn't we continuously be receiving information? The way that WebSockets work is we continuously will need to actually call this function receive to more or less ask the WebSocket if any new data came in. 
So we'll we'll hook that up momentarily. So we're gonna say receive here. Notice there's an async await version of this too. We're just gonna use the one with the callback. Now this completion handler is gonna give us a message uh, and I believe an error as well. And it's gonna be wrapped inside this result. So what we wanna go ahead and here is do is switch the results. If we got the success case, we have a message. Now this message can be a data, otherwise bytes, or a string. We'll take care of that in a moment. But we're also going to get an error if uh, something goes wrong. So we're going to say receive error, and we're going to stick that error in here. Otherwise, in here, we now want to switch on the message. Now if we get uh, data, we're going to handle said data. Uh, in our case, handle, we're just going to print it out because we're being lazy. So we're going to say data, and we're going to interpolate the data in here. Maybe I'll say got data, be a little more uh, specific there. Next one that we're going to implement is string. And this one is the one that we're going to see in our demo momentarily. And once again, we're going to simply print it out. We're going to say got string and I'll stick the message in here. And one last thing you're going to want to do is handle any other cases. Otherwise, your uh, compiler will complain at you. So we're going to say unknown at default. And I'll probably just break in here since we don't really need to print anything out. And I believe that is all we need to do. Now, we need to actually call these functions. Where the heck are we going to call them from? Well, we're going to call them as soon as our connection is established. So once we connect to our WebSocket, we're first going to ping. Then we're going to send a message, or maybe we'll receive a message first, and then we'll send a message. Now, the other thing you might be wondering is we're only calling the function uh, all three of these once here. So when do we go about actually continuously receiving data? At the end of this receive function, we're actually going to call receive again. So we're going to say self dot receive. We don't want to cause a memory leak, so we're going to put a uh, optional weak capture here. So we'll say weak self, just like that. Similarly, for send, we want to continuously send different messages for our example. So what I'm going to do is we're going to send this message on the global queue after maybe one second. So we'll say now plus one second. We're going to stick this guy in here, self dots, and we're going to call self dot send continuously every one second. And I think that should do it. Hopefully I didn't miss anything and screw anything up. So let's go ahead and give it a run. And we expect to see a whole lot of stuff continuously printed out in our bottom console here. So let's take a look at what we've got. Looks like we have some continuous things printing out. So the first thing that we got here at the top is we connected. Then the server responded with this information here, this info, you are using a test API key. Now we're sending a message every single time with a random integer and the server, just for this uh, kind of test environment, is sending the same message back. So if we take a look at our code up here in our send function, we're simply sending uh, send new message with a random integer and then receive, we continuously call that and the server is basically spitting that back out to us. So that's WebSockets, it's definitely working. Let's add a button to the UI so we can actually close this connection. Uh, you never wanna to continue to keep a WebSocket open because that will be terrible for your app and it'll probably crash and we'll get a really uh, bad rating in the app store. So let's go ahead and add a close button here. I'm gonna add a close button. We're gonna create it like any other piece of UI programmatically. We're gonna go ahead and instantiate a button in here like so. Return button, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe we'll stick a background color in here just for the sake of uh, seeing it more easily. We'll say button, set title. We'll go ahead and make it close, normal, button, set title color. We'll make it uh, black perhaps. And this is for normal, let's make this black, not blue. Let's go ahead and stick this on our UI. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, button dot frame is CG rect 00 250. We should probably add it as a sub view. And then finally, let's stick a uh, selector on this so we can actually have something happen. And we're going to call this the close function. We're just going to do it like that. And then this is going to be touch up inside. Let me fix my typo. 
And this close function down here, we need to prefix it at objc since it is a selector. Let's go ahead and give it a run. And when I tap on that button, hopefully it appears, it'll close out our connection. Now it's at the top left because I forgot to center the button. Let me just go ahead and center it here really quick. Third time's a charm. We should now see the button in the dead center of our screen. We got a connection established to our WebSocket. We're gonna go ahead and click on this button and boom, just like that, it has cleared out our, it has closed rather our connection. Now in our case, we continue to get errors here when we try to send a message. And the reason for that is uh, because we continuously are calling that send function, but the WebSocket is no longer open, so we're getting an error here. So what we should probably be doing is we should probably only be sending new messages in our demo if the error was, uh, you know, nil. But of course, once again, this is a demo. You would have a more intelligent implementation of this if you were actually building your own app. So that's WebSockets in a nutshell. Hopefully I didn't go through all of this too quick. It's really not a lot of code. You've got your four core functions to ping, close, send, and receive. And then you leverage the WebSocket delegate to get your connection open and closed states. And that's all there is to it. Let me know if you guys want to see more WebSocket examples in the comments down below. I think it's something that's really interesting and honestly doesn't get covered a lot, um, irrespective to how cool it is. Drop a like down below if you haven't done so already. Hit subscribe if you're into iOS, Swift, tech, want to stick around, trying to get the channel to 50k, maybe by end of year. We'll see how that goes. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.